Hey guys, it's Drew with Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about two key lessons for you and what you should look out for when you're buying coins at your local coin show. Will these coins sticker? Will they not sticker? And how will your grading eye be better by this video? Let's show you right now. Let's get this video started. So today we're taking a look at three proof type coins that are held in doily holders. We had a friend reach out to us, um, a longtime friend, and he wanted us to submit some stuff to CAC. Life's been pretty busy and crazy as of late, so we haven't been able to send a whole lot of stuff in. There's not been a lot of shows, and so uh, we're very thankful that we're able to look at his coins, show them to you in this video, and give you our thoughts. And the two lessons that we want to talk to you about today, which are kind of the biggest issues with proof coins, is hairlines and wear. And how um, those two things can end up hurting you or helping you if you understand what you're looking at. And so the past two videos when we were talking about trap coins and we were talking about fresh coins, we were talking about what is your eye seeing? What are you witnessing? We all see the same things on coins, but what are they? What's the definition of hairlines and how does wear affect a coin and its grade and its value and so we're going to take a look at three coins today like we talked about in doily holders but we're also going to give you examples of when we failed and when we won as well we have very original and fresh uh, seeded half dollars that we got CAC approved recently we also have an 1876 20 cent piece where we failed big on lost a lot of money but it's a great learning tool for you as someone moving into the hobby and wanting to learn more about coins and how to grade them and how to develop your numismatic eye. And by the way, your support means a lot. So if you enjoy videos like this, make sure to leave a like and comment your thoughts at the end of this video. So when taking a look at type coins like the seated half dollar, um, there's hairlines that can exist in the fields of the coin. And what is the fields of the coin? And it's all going to be illustrated by this crappy sketch that I drew. So this is Lady Liberty seated here, this is the stars, this is the date. Hairlines exist out in the fields. The fields are the open areas of a coin. Most of the time on seated halves or seated dimes, hairlines exist over in this field. And the way you could see hairlines is how when light reflects off the surfaces of this coin, the lines go in different directions. So if light's coming in from this area, you can see the lines going upward if, light, if the light comes in from this area, you can see opposite lines going in a different direction. And most of the time, this can be broken down into either cleaning or it could happen during the minting process. And so which one is it, right? Do business strikes uh, get reduced down to a clean coin while proofs get away with it? Why is that? Let's take some time. Let's go over to the grading lamp and let's give you guys a look at these coins. As we were discussing, with proofs, you're kind of looking out for two things that I pick up on, which is, does the coin have wear? And also, are there hairlines? And if the hairlines are there, are they too much for uh, CEC to approve the coin? And a lot of that has to do with when you're judging a coin between proof 60 to proof 70, there is an influx of hairlines, um, you know, from... Proof 70 all the way to proof 60, which means the more hairlines you have, the closer to proof 60 it will be. The less hairlines you have, the closer to proof 70 it will be. There's no seated proof 70 uh, dimes out there, but with this coin, there are extensive hairlines. And for people that don't know what hairlines are, they're basically striations that are in the fields. They're not on the devices um, that are kind of like a web. So you would see when you tilt the coin in the light one way, you would see lines going in one direction. And then when you tilt it a different way, you see lines going in the other direction. And it's kind of hard to pick up here, but there are extensive hairlines on this coin. And it is graded proof 64. Let me get my pen real quick just to show you. So the hairlines on most seated coins are out in the right field and some in the left field. And the reason why hairlines are extensive on proofs and they're actually market acceptable meaning that they would grade you know proof 64 they would not be graded cleaned is because these are very fragile in their devices 
with business strikes, they are meant to be circulated, they are meant to be handled by the public, but with proofs, it's almost like handling um, a glass cup over a plastic cup. They're very fragile, um, they scratch easy, and they were held in different areas. So, you know, with business strikes, you could see them being go going to um, a bank, in a bank bag, and then they were put into rolls, and then people used them for buying goods and that's how the history laid out. But with proofs, most times they were held in boxes, felt boxes. Um, they were also, you know, maybe put in a sock drawer or... And when those coins are put in those certain areas, hair lines can be prevalent just because the devices, like I said, are so soft and so finicky. And that's where hair lines come into play and hurt the coin. So hair lines on this coin, like I said, are right here. There's a massive amount of hairlines that are hard to pick up on, and that's my main concern for this coin. Do I think it should be, a, you know, a good proof 63? Possibly, um, but the way that we can start to learn more about coins is looking at coins and understanding them. And so, you know, what is too many hairlines for proof 64 with John Albanese and his team? That's something that we don't know specifically yet, and that's why when we send coins in, our goal is to not only look at the hairlines, look at the issues that might be on the coin, but also take a mental note if it does pass or it doesn't pass because that's what would qualify you to send more in or send less in, right? And that's what would help you um, get a coin stickered or not send a coin in because you know it wouldn't sticker. There's two issues on this coin that I could see that would hold this coin back from CEC also. There seems to be one scratch here under this star and a scratch underneath this star. That may be from... Uh, you know, something that rubbed up against it that scratched the coin. Uh, and that, for me, holds this coin back from it being uh, CAC approved. The coin may have been scratched by, like I said, maybe uh, it was sitting in a 2x2 two two that someone put it in. Or uh, maybe, you know, a box or a corner scratched it on something. And it's really noticeable in the field. It's really distracting, actually. Um, the haze on the coin is pretty thick also. So as for business strikes and proofs like we talk about, we want more luster with gems. We want, um, and gems are uh, proof 65 and above or MS 65 and above. With gems, you want more luster. You want uh, the devices to be clear and you want it to look like a rather problem-free coin. In proof 64 and below, um, when the haze starts to get really chalky like this one, that one could be a little bit tough for the graders too. So there's so many things to juggle with this coin, but for me, um, if there's a major distraction, for me it would be just those scratches in the fields. I think the haze is okay, it's market acceptable. Is it good for the grade? Not too sure. I'd love to hear your comments, but that's, um, you know, that's what I wanted to talk with you about this coin. Um, and when we talk about market acceptable, um, this coin passed because hairlines are rather acceptable. They're very fragile in their fields and, and devices. And when you see the hairlines in the fields, you know that it was probably because um, on how they were made and they needed to be cherished and taken care of. As for business strikes, they're rather rigid, like a plastic cup, right? They're, um, if you drop them, they won't break or they won't be scratched as easily. And so with hairlines on a business strike coin, where do those come from? Do they come from how fragile the devices are or do they are they man-made? And the answer is they're man-made. So... You know, when there's small imperfections out in the field, so say there's uh, a few big hits out in the field here or a few big hits out in the field here, um, there's going to be uh, maybe a coin dealer or coin collector that said, hey, you know, I can get this in two grades higher or a grade higher if I, you know, use a wire brush and kind of polish out or get rid of those hits. And now we recognize them because graders have become very uh, knowledgeable and understanding of this they start to put coins like this in details holders, which means it can't be graded numerically because there are many hairlines that are out in the fields. This one's a very shiny and bright coin, but there are striations going back and forth in the right field. You can see almost vertical lines going downward from the cap, and when I take it to the other side of the coin, you can see hairlines going upward towards the stars. So. This, most likely with the hairlines on business strikes, come from someone messing with the coin, someone taking it away from its original shape and what it was designed to look like, 
And that's where details coins can come in and make them market unacceptable in terms of their cleaning. And this one is marked cleaning because someone, um, after this coin was produced, cleaned this coin to make it look better than it was. So they could sell it to someone raw or they could get it into uh, their own grading slab and it could be two or three points higher and they can make a thousand or a few thousand dollars on the coin. Well, NGC picked it up and said, hey, this is not market acceptable. It has been cleaned. And we fought with ourselves many times on this coin. And uh, unfortunately, this is one of our losses. So we're going to keep moving on from that. When we talk about where on a coin, where can you find where with seeded coins? So we recently sent two seeded CC half dollars in. And the biggest point to look at is the legs for me. And by the ANA grading standards book, the legs is where a lot of the wear will take place. As you can see, when you look at a coin, um, almost like a flat earth type of thing, you can see that there's, you know, there's raised areas and there's lower areas. The fields are the lower areas and the details are the higher areas. And every coin is different in terms of a design on where the coin starts to wear first. And so the legs and down by the feet is where you can see wear taking place. And so we kind of developed a little bit of a grading standard or grading uh, curriculum, it looks like, because we have not only a AU55, we also have an AU50. And if you take a look at both coins um, differently, you could see that there's significantly more wear on the top leg and starting to move down towards the foot. And there's a little bit of wear kind of on the head. And when you take a look at the eagle as well, you could see that the head on the eagle is starting to get a little bit more mushy and uh, soft. And uh, yeah, so when you're looking at coins, you can't look at them like it's uh, in a slab already. You can't look at them with a grade. You have to understand where the coin is and what has happened to the coin. And did they miss something? I've looked at many coins in my past and I've seen coins just like this one. So uh, this one would be graded, you know, proof 64 at a show. I look at the coin itself and I could see where on the leg. I could see where possibly on the head. And that for me uh, is a red flag, right? So what I'm seeing is that they missed that this coin has been circulated and now it's graded an uncirculated 64. And so if you know where where starts on a coin and you know what hairlines uh, will affect a coin in terms of its grade, if it will grade, or, grade good, you know, a proof 64, a numerical grade, or it will grade details, will ultimately uh, save you money or um, it will cost you a lot of money. Because I've seen dealers that, uh, you know, set up at local shows, they don't know necessarily what hairlines are or what wear looks like, where the wear is. They just said, hey, we can make a buck if we buy some coins from people that come into the show. And they end up spending way too much money on the coins. They need to lose thousands of dollars just to recoup what they spent on them. And so we're going to talk about two more coins in this video just to try to capitalize on hairlines, show you a little bit more about them. So you could see a lot of hairlines on this Proof 63. Um, they're kind of going upward towards the stars and going downward towards these stars. And it's very tough to show you, but it's kind of the same way on this side. You could see the hairlines going underneath. It's just that um, you know, where these coins were held, but also how clean the dies were. So if there's any dust that got on the dies or, you know, when these coins were struck, that could also be a big factor in terms of hairlines. Um, when I take a look at this coin, I don't see too many issues. The hairlines are there, but for proof 63, I think that's fair. The way that they graded this coin, you could see the hairlines even crossing through the V and down through the V. Um, and I see some blue splotching here down by the star, and I could see splotching here by E Pluribus Unum. And that might be PVC, or that just might be your original, original haze from where it was held. And so, overall though, I think this coin has very few hairlines for the grade, and I do think it is good for the grade. I think it would pass at CAC. Um, we are not professionals in terms of us stickering coins, so we leave it up to them when they say no or yes to coins. And hopefully we can get a word uh, out of them this time for this submission, just so we can understand where they are and if we were correct or not. But I do think this one is good for the grade. And when you compare this 1859 to this 1866, you can really tell the difference, right? So 
When you look at the fields on this coin, there's very few hairlines that I can see. There's genuinely nice toning. There's two bigger hits here out in the fields, but the color is very pleasant. Uh, they don't, coins that are proofs tone a little bit differently than business strikes, once again, held in different areas. And um, you can definitely see that as you start to study proofs and business strikes and how they tone differently. Um, there's blue, purple, everything that you might want to see in this coin. A little darkness down here towards the half dollar. And um, not sure if they would be upset by that if it's starting to turn environmental on them. Environmental would mean that there's something that's funky on the coin and over the time it's going to turn into something more and more dark that will degrade the coin. That's what PVC will do and that's why PVC is marked and coins are not stickered if they have PVC. And so when I take a look at this coin, I do like the devices, I like the toning of the coin. Um, and I'm sure when this client purchased this coin, maybe he was thinking, hey, maybe no one ever sent this uh, for in for a sticker. They just sent it into an auction house and that's probably where he bought it. And so, uh, you know, don't, don't think every coin has been to CEC that you've sent in because there's definitely, um, there's definitely some out there that haven't been and there's a lot of surprises out there. And so this is a very nice coin. I do think this one would sticker as well. If you guys see any issues on this coin, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. But we wanted to take a brief moment to talk to you about hairlines and also about wear because the wear of a coin is very important um, when you're spending hard-earned money, thousands of dollars on a proof uh, coin, that's a type coin, and you just don't want to get stuck in those. You want to buy the right coin at the right time with the right amount of knowledge. As we can see right here down these legs, I don't see any friction. I don't see any wear. I can see that it's fully struck and I don't see very many issues. Um, and so I think this coin is gorgeous where it is. It has a few scratches on the holder, which is impairing the coin a little bit, but I would love to know your thoughts down below of the two lessons that we talked about today. Did you learn something from it? Um, and has it helped you or burned you in the past when you've bought a coin and then regretted it later? But uh, we hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.